Sup guys, it's Alex here and welcome to NCAA Basketball 10 predicts the winner of the 2024 NCAA tournament. In prior years I've kind of gone game by game and done 63 different videos and actually played out each of the NCAA tournament video NCAA tournament games, but obviously that takes a lot of time and I just haven't had that time this year. So we're going to do it combined in one video here. I had also posted it on the community feed, which you guys would prefer. And you guys chose kind of one video here instead of having 63 videos clogging your feed with like three videos coming out each day. So it has come out a little bit late. I was planning on making this video Sunday night. I'm making this video on Wednesday, which is when this video is coming out. We had the first four games last night where Wagner beat Howard and Colorado State beat Virginia. Tonight we have Boise State and Colorado and then Grambling and Montana State. But um, for the purposes of this video, I just went with the teams that were favored. So I have Montana State instead of Grambling State. And then I also have Colorado over Boise State in the tournament bracket. So with this video, I'm going game by game. NCAA Basketball 10 predicting the winner of each game. It's going to go in a kind of a weird order. That's just how the NCAA... Um, basketball 10 tournament thing works but we'll go game by game here see who advances on in each round we'll start it off with florida atlantic versus northwestern a classic eight versus nine game we have northwestern winning that one 71 to 61 it looks like so our next game is dayton versus nevada we're starting off with an upset will we see another one here we do not Dayton wins 95-82, to 82, as you can see right there, to advance on to the second round. Of course, if you see some names in these videos, I'm just using my most recently updated rosters. Maybe it's not even the right rosters. I saw Obi Toppin in there for Dayton, but maybe that's because Dayton hadn't made it to the tournament in a while, and I just hadn't updated the rosters. Did not have enough time to update the rosters this year, um, but, I mean, that's just kind of how things worked out. Texas Tech versus NC State. For a spot in the second round, we have 60 Texas Tech moving on. I almost clicked. Uh, to move on to the next round by accident. We have Texas Tech win 85 to 67. Baylor versus the Fighting Toothpaste of Colgate. We have Baylor. Yeah, you guys saw that pop up right there. They destroy Colgate here, 95 to 53. So up next, we have Kansas and Sanford. This is a popular upset pick in the NCAA tournament this year. The actual bracket, given that Kevin McCuller is going to be missing the game against Sanford here. So let's see if they're able to pull off the upset in the NCAA tournament. Oh, they are not. Look at that score. 123 of 51. That's not going <laughs> to be too good. Kentucky versus Oakland. My Kentucky Wildcats, I had them advancing on to the NCAA championship, the finals, uh, or the national championship game, the final game of the tournament there in my actual bracket. Will they move on here? They do. They were able to beat Oakland 96 to 58. Clemson versus New Mexico. For a spot in the second round, who's it going to be? I have New Mexico winning this game in real life. And in here we have Clemson. Oh, I almost did it again. Clemson wins that one, 85-74, to 74, as you can see right there. Up next we have Purdue here. Last year they lost to 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Will NCAA Basketball 10 predict a 16 seed upset here? They do not, but it was a close game, 77-67 to 67 there against Montana State. Marquette versus WKU, Big Red and the Hilltoppers. Can they pull off the upset here against Tyler Kolek and Marquette? They do not. Marquette advances on there, 95-61. to 61. So then we have Utah State versus TCU. I think this is the last game of the Thursday set of games, if I remember it correctly. But Utah State versus TCU for a spot in the second round to face Purdue. We have 9 seed TCU advancing on there, 95 to 85. So we have, oh, that one went to overtime too. Um, so we've had two upsets, if you want to call it that so far, with 9 seeds beating 8 seeds. We want to see some actual upsets happening here. So up next we have San Diego State and UAB. Let's see who moves on. We have San Diego State moving on in a route. Look at that, 100 to 58. So up next, Florida versus Colorado. With the playing game, it'd be funny if Boise State won the game tonight and they ended up beating Florida and uh, Colorado ends up winning an NCAA basketball 10. But let's see who they have winning here. If we simulate it, Florida advances on their chalk holding so far, 87 to 77. Up next, Auburn versus Yale. A lot of people have Auburn as the sleeper team in the NCAA tournament this year. NCAA Basketball 10 has Auburn advancing on and another route 95 to 49. 
Up next, we have UConn, the number one overall seed, facing off against Stetson here. Stetson's first NCAA basketball appearance, and we have Stetson, or NCAA tournament appearance, I should say. And we have UConn advancing on there, 79 to 47. Up next, we have Arizona versus Long Beach State. Of course, Long Beach State has the kind of lame duck coach in real life this year. But will NCAA basketball attend keep their season going? Let's see. They do not. They have Arizona winning 99-76. to Up next is Gonzaga and McNeese. McNeese is a popular pick to pull off the first round upset. Will they get the upset here? They do not. Gonzaga wins handily 100-74. to Up next is Nev Nebraska. I almost said Nevada. Nebraska versus Texas A&M right there. For a spot in the second round, we have Texas A&M advancing on their ninth. What was that, 99-76 to 76 or something? No, I, I don't even know what I was looking at. 81-62, to 62, Texas A&M advances. So up next, we have Texas versus Colorado State. Can Colorado State win their second game of the tournament, technically? We have Texas. No, Texas moving on 104-56. to 56. Holy crap. All right, so up next, USC. Actually, that's not USC. That is South Carolina, kind of weird abbreviation there against Oregon. Oregon winning the Pac-12, the final Pac-12 uh, tournament of that existence. We have South Carolina moving on. Another chalk moving on so far. Hopefully we'll have some upsets as we move forward, but not too many first-round upsets in CWA Basketball 10's predicting. So we have Wisconsin versus James Madison, another popular upset pick in the actual NCAA tournament. Who does NCAA Basketball 10 have moving on? They have the Badgers, 97-71. to 71. They are really shaking out these low seeds. Illinois versus Moorhead State. Can the Eagles pull off the upset? They do not. 99 to 66. Tennessee versus St. Peter's. Can St. Peter's recapture the magic? Let's see. They cannot. Tennessee wins 105 to 62 handily. Then we have Iowa State here versus South Dakota State. To move on to the second round, we have Iowa State advancing on 102 to 54. Up next is BYU versus Duquesne. Can Duquesne pull off the upset here? Can they beat BYU? They cannot. That is another route, 97 to 57. Man, NCAA basketball 10 is holding off with the upsets. Mississippi State versus Michigan State. For a spot in the second round, we have Michigan State moving on there, 103 to 73, really handling business. North Carolina versus Wagner for a spot in the second round. Will we see a 16 seed pulling off the upset? No, we will not. A 53-point win by North Carolina. Holy crap. And then we have, uh, what is that, Creighton versus Akron here for the final matchup of this regional down here. It's, it says South Regional, but those are all kind of the regional setups from the 2009 tournament. I have all the brackets set up normally for how they actually play out. But we have Creighton versus Akron here for a spot in the second round. Creighton moves on there, so pretty much all chalk all the way around. Up next, we have Washington State versus Dayton here. Final matchup of the first round for this region. We have Washington State advancing on there, 84 to 68. And then we have St. Mary's versus UT Arlington here. So in real life, this is Grand Canyon, but they were not in NCAA Basketball 10. I don't think they were a D1 school yet. So we have the second place team in that conference and UT Arlington advancing on here. Let's see if they can beat St. Mary's. They cannot. St. Mary's advances on there. They win, what is that, 99-55. to 55. Then we have Duke versus Vermont here. For a spot in the second round, will we see a huge upset? We do not. Duke advances on, what was that, 97-69. to 69. Houston versus UNC Asheville. Similar thing to where Longwood actually won that championship and is that team in real life, but they weren't in NCAA Basketball 10, so I went, went with the second place team in that conference, which, is, which was UNC Asheville. For a spot in the second round, let's see. Houston advances on. They win, what is that, 88-67. to 67. And then I believe this is our last game of the first round. Alabama versus Charleston took almost 10 minutes to get here. But for a spot in the second round, will we see our only double-digit seed in the second round? We do not. We have Alabama advancing on 95-57. to 57. So, I mean, that finishes out the first round. NCAA basketball 10 sucking here with no first-round upsets. But maybe we'll see some upsets here as we move on to the Sweet 16. Now we have Kentucky versus Texas Tech. This is not where I want to see an upset, and I won't have to see it there. 79-58 Kentucky advances. Baylor versus Clemson for a spot in the Sweet 16. Will we see an upset? We do not. Holy crap. 127-71 Baylor handling business. 
then UConn versus Northwestern for a spot in the Sweet 16. Number one overall seed, UConn, moves on right there, 103-83. to 83. Auburn versus San Diego State here, a classic four versus five matchup. To move on and face UConn, we have Auburn advancing on, 101-74. to 74. Arizona versus Dayton. Will we see an upset pick here? Will we see Dayton pulling off the 7 over 2 upset? We do not. We have Arizona winning 93 to 75 to advance on to face Baylor. Purdue versus TCU. Can Purdue turn around their NCAA tournament uh, fortunes as of the last couple of years? They face TCU here for a spot in the Sweet 16, and we have Purdue winning, winning by 52 points. So we've had some major blowouts happening here. Then we have Marquette versus Florida for a spot in the Sweet 16 to face Kentucky. Who's it going to be? We have Florida pulling off the upset there, our first true upset, a 7 over 2 in this tournament, 83 to 79 there. So up next we have Kansas versus Gonzaga here. I'd be surprised if Kansas actually made it to the Sweet 16 in real life now. But let's see what happens here. We have Kansas holding off their 93 to 85 advancing on. Duke versus Wisconsin, rematch of the 2015 National Championship game. For a spot here, we have five-seed Wisconsin winning that one, 74-70. to 70. So a pretty close affair there. It looks like they actually had a comeback, too. We're down by nine at the half. So then we have Houston versus Texas A&M. The winner faces Wisconsin here in the Sweet 16. Houston versus Texas A&M. We have a huge upset here. Our, first, our second big upset, but our first major upset here. A number one seed falling 99 to 98. That would have been a crazy game to watch. A one point victory there for the Aggies. I mean, it looks like it was close throughout. Marcus Sasser had 41 points there, just looking at that. But uh, an absolutely crazy upset there. Here are where the upsets are happening. Number one, North Carolina versus number nine, Michigan State. I have Michigan State pulling off the upset in real life. What happens here? North Carolina advances on there 76 to 65. Then we have Colorado, or no, that's not Colorado, that's, Cl no, that's Creighton versus South Carolina. These abbreviations are messing me up. Creighton versus South Carolina here for a spot in the Sweet 16. We have Creighton advancing on by one point there. Close matchup, 67 to 66. Then we have Illinois versus BYU to advance on to the Sweet 16. We have Illinois destroying right there, 108 to 78. Then for a spot in the Sweet 16 to move on against Creighton, we have Tennessee versus Texas. Rick Barnes revenge game, battle of the orange teams, whatever you want to call it. And we have Tennessee advancing on 88 to 76. Then for a spot in the Sweet 16 and a date with North Carolina, we have Alabama versus St. Mary's. To move on, we have Alabama winning by 40 points. Holy crap. Brandon Miller, of course. I didn't, uh, as I mentioned earlier, rosters aren't updated for this year. Didn't have time to get around to it. But we have Alabama winning by 40. So up next. Final spot here for the Sweet 16 for um, this region. We have Iowa State versus Washington State. Battle of the States. Who will advance on here? We have Iowa State winning handily. 100 to 64. Look at that. All right. So we are down to the nitty gritty here. We are in the Sweet 16 for spots to advance on to the Elite Eight. Number one, Purdue. Number four, Kansas for a spot in the Elite Eight. Who's it going to be? We have Purdue winning that matchup there, 98-68, to 68, so not even close. Up next, we have Tennessee versus Creighton to match up with Purdue in the Elite Eight. Who will advance out of here? We have Tennessee winning handily, too, 102-64, to 64, a big-time win for the Volunteers. North Carolina versus Alabama for a spot in the, in the Elite Eight. Who's it going to be? We have North Carolina winning a barn burner here. 103 to 100, Armando Baycott with 32 points right there. Then Arizona versus Baylor. Who will get that date with North Carolina that we just saw? It will be Baylor advancing on past Arizona, 92 to 86. So Scott Drew working his magic again. All right, five seed Wisconsin versus nine seed Texas A&M. Can the Aggies continue their hot run here through the Sweet 16? Who's it going to be? Oh, no, they are not going to continue that run. Look at that, 91-56, to 56, Wisconsin beats Texas A&M. Then for a date with Wisconsin, SEC battle here. Is it going to be Kentucky or is it going to be Florida? It will be Kentucky advancing on there, 101-72. to 72. Then we have Iowa State versus Illinois. It really sucks that these two teams have to match up in the Sweet 16. I would have loved to see these two teams 
maybe in the Elite Eight or even Final Four in real life. But right now for the NCAA uh, Basketball 10, we have Iowa State advancing on there 88-77. to 77. And Then for a matchup, a date with Iowa State, we have UConn versus Auburn. Who will advance on? We have UConn winning a close one there. Look at that, 98 to 94. They had to fight back. They were down by 15 at the half, and they fought back there. All right, Elite Eight matchups now. We are getting to crunch time, clutch time, whatever you want to call it, for a chance to move on to the Final Four. Will it be one seed Purdue or two seed Tennessee? It will be Purdue advancing on there, and not a close game, 91 to 63. Up next, we have number one seed North Carolina versus number three seed Baylor. Who's it going to be advancing on to the sweet si or to the final four? It will be North Carolina, 95 to 79, advancing on right there in the Elite Eight. In that top left regional, we have Connecticut versus Iowa State for a spot in the final four. It will be ooh UConn winning 103 to 52. That's not realistic. <laughs> All right, so our last matchup here, rematch of that legendary 2015 Final Four game. We have Kentucky versus Wisconsin for a chance to move on to the Final Four. It will be Kentucky advancing on 102-61. to So we've had some blowouts in the Elite Eight. Absolutely crazy. So our Final Four here are three one seeds and then a three seed. We have Kentucky versus, oh, no, it messed up. I've set it up similarly to how the actual NCAA tournament ended up playing out, but we'll just play it out this way. I know it's not realistic just with, with the way it's set up. I set it up like the actual tournament was supposed to look back in 2009, but this is just how it ended up playing out here. Kentucky versus Connecticut, what could be a matchup in the national championship game in real life. Let's see who advances on here. We have Kentucky moving on past Connecticut, so if they played in the championship game, we, it would have had Kentucky winning that matchup there. So then we have Purdue versus North Carolina. If these two teams were to match up in the actual North national championship game, who would win that one there? They have Purdue winning it. So and what was that score there? 99-72, to 72, winning pretty handily. So that sets up our national championship game. NCAA basketball 10 messed up a little bit with how the brackets went because I set it up perfectly with how the 2009 was. But here we go. This could be a matchup in the Final Four in real life. Number one, Purdue. Number three, Kentucky to win the national championship. Who does NCAA Basketball 10 think it's going to be? They think it will be Purdue. They have Purdue winning it 75-62, to winning the national championship there. Big game from Zach Eady, 31 points dropping right there. So NCAA Basketball 10 has Purdue winning the national championship, finally getting that monkey off their back, finally putting to rest their NCAA tournament woes over the last few seasons. So there we have it. NCAA Basketball 10 predicts Purdue to win the national championship there. Had some, was kind of annoyed with NCAA Basketball 10 there for not picking any first-round upsets, but we had some interesting games there with like Texas A&M upsetting Houston and then Florida upsetting Marquette. Not too many upsets overall. Wish I really, really would have loved to see some more. But yeah, there we go. NCAA Basketball 10 predicting Purdue to win it all. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you all later.